How y'all doing? All right. I love my church. I hope you love your church. We're in a series called I Love My Church. If you're new with us, uh, every August we kind of circle up and get ready for fall because fall is when ministry season kind of ramps up and people are coming back and we're getting ready for all of that. And so uh, we love our church. And through this entire series, we've had a different piece of swag every weekend. First weekend, you got a sticker for your window or your laptop or whatever you want to put it on. Second weekend, you got another sticker that uh, says Vineyard, and hopefully you put that on something. I have been walking the parking lots. I'm making note of license plates and who actually has them on or not. I'm telling you, the value of your car goes up if you stick these stickers on. Uh, last week, we had a key tag talking about the three knots, and, uh, and hopefully you put that on your keychain and you're remembering to invite people. Um, and this weekend, this weekend, we have these really nice ball caps. So if you are a, an adult uh, and you are here, you get one of these, okay? So on your way out, you'll pick these up. Do not pick one up for your grandma who's not here, okay? This is for you, um, and uh, we, just don't, we just don't have the resources to buy the whole community hats. So just, just get one, and uh, that'll be great. And wear that around. Guys, the purpose of all of these things is to start conversations, to, to get people asking, hey, what... You love your church, you go, to, you go to the Vineyard Church, tell me about it, and that gives you an opportunity to uh, say, really? <laughs> you should come to church with me next weekend. Boy, you guys are, you guys are good. So, um, yeah, so, if you're, again, if you're, you're new this week, um, this week's a little different, but uh, I, I want to catch you up on what we've covered so far. So, real quick, first week we talked about the fact that the church that Jesus said he would build uh, was not a building, wasn't an organization, wasn't even a particular person or pastor other than him, uh, but, but it was a movement. The church was supposed to be a movement. It's a, it's a gathering of people on mission together. That's a movement. And so the definition we came up with for the church, the church that Jesus said he would build, is the people of God living together in the presence of God on a mission from God, pushing back darkness and changing our community, changing our world one life at a time. That's the church. That's the church that we are striving to be, and that, I believe that is the church that Jesus said that he was going to build. And that's why, as we move to the Capitol here in a couple of weeks, we can walk away from a perfectly good building that doesn't have room for people and go somewhere else, because it doesn't matter where we meet, as long as we're together on our mission and God's with us, we're the church, right? And so we're not going to be constrained by a building. Now, the second week, I encourage you to do for others what somebody has done for you. And, and as I shared, most uh, before you ever got here, somebody was preparing for you. There was, in fact, there's a whole team of people preparing for you, serving in various ways in various areas throughout the church, whether it's kids or hospitality or in the worship team or wherever, getting ready for you so that when you came, you were like, wow, I love this place. I want to be a part of it. And you came back and you came back and eventually this became your church and you love your church. But it's because somebody else decided to give their time and give their efforts and, and, and get, bring their skills and talents and serve you. And I invited you two weeks, or, yeah, two weeks ago to be a part of that team, to do for someone what someone has done for you. Last weekend, we had 217 people show up for volunteer orientations, and right now there's probably about 100 people back there while we're all in here. Uh, and that is just amazing. So excited for, for what comes next. So uh, again, if, if you haven't done the volunteer orientation and you're not serving currently somewhere in the church and you want to serve on your Connect card, just write volunteer and we'll follow up with you. We'll figure out a way to get you up to speed and get you plugged in. But uh, service is such an important part, not not just for the difference that you can make in other people's lives, but the difference it makes in your life as well. And you can ask anybody on one of our teams and they'll tell you. It's life-giving, it's fun, they love what they, they, love what they do. Last week I asked you uh, again to do for others what others have done for you. Uh, most of us, let's say 80, 90% of us are here because somebody invited us to come to church. And so I challenged you to invite others. And, and if we will, if we will invite others, then, it can completely turn this community upside down because right now, statistically speaking, 2% of church people, that would be us, 2% of us actually have invited somebody in last year and the year before and the year before. If we can turn that number upside down, we can turn Wheeling, West Virginia and the Ohio Valley upside down because 82% of them are likely to come if they're invited. 
And all we need to do is start inviting them to come and see, come and hang out with Jesus. And last week I gave you three things to listen for in a conversation. And if one of these cues comes up in the conversation, then it's time to invite them to church. Do you remember what they were? If they're not in church, if things are not going well, we'll call them the three knots, or if they're not prepared for what they're dealing with, they're overwhelmed in some situation in their life. And if one of those three things pops up in a conversation, then we, we can respond. And I gave you the line, we can respond, really? You should come to church with me this weekend and invite them this weekend to come to church, right? All right, good. So that you're all caught up. If you missed the last three weeks, you're good, you're good to go. All right, this week, we're going to talk specifically about some of the details surrounding moving to the capital. And I, hopefully this will be fun and it will be informative and uh, empowering because there's a lot going on and this is a big ship to steer, right? And uh, there have been lots and lots of questions over the last weeks, and I want to try and answer as many of those as I can. We are, as, as Julie said, in two weeks going to be holding services, the very first service uh, for the, as long as we can tell at the Capitol Theater. So that will be September 9th. When is it? So in two weeks, we're going to meet where? Capitol Theater. Next week, we're going to meet where? Right. Okay, good. You guys got that. Good. Just want to make sure. I, I guarantee somebody's going to show up at the Capitol next weekend. All right, so that's what's going on. Now, we're going to do a grand opening uh, on September 30th, which means we're going we're gonna to launch on the 9th, and that gives us three weeks to get our act together. <laughs> if you're not familiar with, with businesses that do a soft launch and then a grand opening, they do a soft launch to get all the details worked out, make sure the systems are working correctly and everything's good, so that when they invite the general public, it's as good as it possibly can be. We're going to do the same kind of thing. So for the first three weeks, we'll be working through the details. That does not mean to not invite people. If you hear one of the three, three knots over the, the next several weeks, invite them to come this weekend, all right? Just tell them, say, hey, we're, we're kind of, you know, just working out the details, but you'll get an early behind the scenes look, you know, and give us, give us some grace and bring them along anyway. And that's gonna go from September 9th to September 30th, grand opening on September 30th. That's the date we're gonna promote. We're gonna encourage the entire community to come check that out. People are really, really curious about what the heck the Vineyard Church is doing uh, and what it's going to look like and what we're going to do at the, at the theater. We have a great opportunity for invitations. So invite, invite, invite. Um, one of the questions I've been getting, uh, which is I've already addressed, I'm going to address it again. One of the questions I've been getting is why? Why are we moving to the capital? And the answer to that question is real simple because Jesus said go. Um, Jesus said go. Now, he didn't say, say go to the capital, although through prayer and discernment and all that, we really feel like this is where he's leading us to go. But Jesus, before he left this earth, gathered his, his core team together and said, guys, go. And, and we find this in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all four gospels, and the book of Acts, where Jesus said, don't just stay here in Jerusalem, don't just circle up and make it about you guys and, and, the, and the building, the temple, because they were very, very temple-centric, don't make it about all of that. Go. Go to where people have no idea who I am or no idea who the Father is. Go to the ends of the earth, to cultures that have no concept that God, there's a God who made them and loves them, and take this message and take this church and build this church. In Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, that's, where, that's what we classically call the Great Commission, and that's where we get our mission statement. Does anybody know our mission statement? Helping people find and follow God. It comes right out of Matthew 28, 19. It says, therefore, go. Jesus gathers him up. He's about to leave. He says, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. In other words, don't just stay here. Go to where people don't know me and help them find me. Helping people find God. Hmm. Okay, and then he says, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's the fun part. If you've been around for a baptism, you know that's the fun part. And then he said, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. Help them learn how to follow God. Helping people find and follow God. But Jesus' command to go shows up in every gospel. It's at the core of what he has given his church to do. And I believe that Jesus wants everybody to find him. I really do. 
In Peter, or in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9, the apostle Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, penned these words. He said, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise. Now, here's what was going on. Jesus said before he left, I'll be back. I'm coming back. Just hang on. I'll be back. And, and, and it had been a couple decades. And they're like, where's Jesus? He hasn't come back. He's being awfully slow about coming back. And so Peter is addressing that. Now, we look back 2,000 years later, and we're like, well, they, they think he's being slow. We, I mean, it's been 2,000 years. But that's a different topic. So he says, the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish. Not wanting who to perish? Anyone, but, but, but everyone to come to repentance. And now, will everybody? No. But does Jesus want everybody to? Yes. And what is the plan for that? Do you remember? Me and you. It's his church. It's the people of God together living in the presence of God on a mission from God. And that gospel and that knowledge and that salvation passes person to person to person to person with us working together as a team in a movement, changing our world one life at a time. That's the plan. Our mission of helping people find and follow God is rooted in that. And the move to the capital is rooted in that as well. Because here's the deal. We can't reach people we can't seat. I'll say that again. We can't reach people we can't see. Now, we can touch people we can't see. We had 5,500 people show up at Easter Extreme, right? We about 1,000 people show up for our football camp, about 335 kids or so, plus their families and everything. And we can invite them to church, but if we don't have a seat for them, we can't connect them in church. And if they can't connect in community, here's what we know. They will, they will just drift off. And, and, and I've said in, past, in the past, it's like telling your community, if, if we can't create space for them, it's like telling your community they can go to hell. And none of us are okay with that. I know you well enough to know that you're not okay with that. And so we have to be able to connect people. And to connect people, we have to have space for them to come and worship with us and connect and find a place to serve and a group and, and all of those things. We, and, and at the end of the day, we can't fulfill our mission from, from this room. We got we to we gotta get a bigger room, so that's what we're going to do. And this has been a long-time problem. This has been something we've been trying to solve for years. And every time we'd start down a different road to try and solve that problem, the door would close, and the door would close. You can imagine that would be pretty frustrating. And it's been so cool with this. God has just blown open the doors and given us such favor. And it is truly a God thing. I am absolutely convinced. And, um, and so that's why we're moving Okay, do you understand? Yes, okay, good, good. Now, there's so many advantages to, to meeting downtown. Uh, one is location, location, location. Any realtors here? You know about location, location, location. It is right off the interstate. Uh, that, in and of itself, is huge. It's, and, and everybody in our community, everybody in the Ohio Valley knows about the Capitol Theater. Most of them have been to the Capitol Theater. They know how to get there. It opens up our ministry area a bit because it's right off the interstate. You don't have to drive another seven minutes to get here. Um, and, and so it's, it's huge from that perspective. Uh, it's huge from the perspective that it's in a much easier invite to somebody who doesn't go to church anywhere. People who don't go to church are scared to go to church because they don't know what to expect. They don't know what the environment's going to be like. They don't know if they're going to, you know, they think, well, I'm not going to know what to do. Um, will the, the roof fall in because, you know, I haven't been in church for a while? Uh, but they know that if they go to the Capitol Theater, the roof's not going to fall in because they've been in the Capitol Theater, right? They kind of know what to expect. It's a neutral location. It's a much easier invite. And it's a, more importantly, it's a much easier step for the people that we're actually inviting. And the environment is incredible. If you were there for Easter, you know this. The sound is unbelievable. It is, it is full and fantastic without being painful. And, uh, and it's, it's just, I mean, it's a half a million dollar sound system and, uh, and, and lights and all of that that we have access to that national acts you know, salivate over, and we're going to have access to that every weekend. And it's going to create an amazing environment. Plus, when we get all of us together in one room, it's just the more people, the better. It's one part Holy Spirit, one part great music, and one part a big group of people worshiping God together, and it is just, you know, it's the goosebump factor. And so that is going to be 
amazing. Uh, we also get to be a part of the, the, the downtown renaissance. And whether you know it or not, because we're on the very, very beginning, the very front edge of the downtown renaissance, it is coming. This is something we've seen happen all over the country. Downtowns that have been dead for 30 and 40 years completely coming around. And, uh, and new life, and all, young people were moving downtown and, and taking on a, a, you know, a walking lifestyle and, and living down there and lining up. Right now we've got the Bory Lofts downtown and the Stone Lofts and their waiting lists to get in. I got to go through the, stone, or the uh, Wheeling Steel Building with the folks from Kuhn the other day. Uh, they're doing the renovation on that. They're putting in over 100 loft apartments in the Wheeling Steel Building. And when they're done, if it goes like anything they've done everywhere else in the country, because they've done this all over the country, they will have a waiting list of people to get in to those loft apartments. So downtown is coming. And uh, our city leaders are excited about it. Our community leaders are excited about it. And they're excited that there's a church willing to, to do something bold and crazy, like move their congregation downtown on Sunday mornings. And so we are being seen as leaders in that, re uh, in that renaissance. And as we bought the, Cap uh, the Kaufman building, again, being seen as leaders. And we're going to have the opportunity to, uh, to help lead the way in this, this downtown renaissance, which is really, really exciting. It puts us in a position of leadership in our community. It gives us the ability to reach the walking population, those young adults who will be moving and have moved downtown. This is you know, a church within walking distance for them. Uh, it also gives us the ability to reach the folks in the high rises and on Wheeling Island. We've been serving with our mercy ministry for years, 20 plus years, and you know what they say? Over and over again, boy, I wish I could get to your church on Sunday morning. Well, guess what? Now they can. And so it gives us the ability to reach them. So the location has so many, so many advantages. And so we're really excited. It's going to be amazing. But for the first three weeks, I ask that you would give us incredible grace uh, and give each other incredible grace because we have a lot of details to work through and figure out and all that. And we've done our very best to, to uh, you know, project what we need to do, but when you get into the middle of it, who knows what will be happening. So be nice, okay? Thank you. Um, all right, questions. Questions that I have heard along the way that you probably want answered. If I don't answer your question, email me and I'll send you a response. But these are the big ones. Here we go. First one is, what's up with the service times? When are we going to meet? Well, here's the deal. We're gonna do one service and the reason for that is, if we split the service between two, there's too many seats and not enough people, and the room will feel empty. And so we're going to do one service, and that service is going to be at 11 o'clock. All right, we're going to do a 9.30 complete run-through of the service uh, with the sermon and everything. And that's, if you're volunteering and you can't be in the service that week, you can come to that 9.30 run-through and get the whole thing. And, and, and the goal is to grow that 11 o'clock service to the point where we can do a service at 9.30 and sometime around 11 o'clock. So, but we have to have enough people to make two services work. Does that make sense? Are you following me? Okay, so it'll be 11 o'clock, uh, and um, the balcony will not be open now. Some of you are terribly oppositional, all right? And you're gonna try and sneak up into the balcony. Just know that we've got football players in these shirts, and they're gonna tackle you if you try and get up the stairs. No, seriously, do, please do not try and sneak up into the balcony. And, um, and, and we're just going to fill the bottom, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go to two, two services at that point. Does that make sense? All right, yay. All right, next question, big question. What about parking? Am I going to have to pay for parking? The answer is no. We've made arrangements with the city. We can park in any city lot. It's free of charge for you on Sunday mornings. You do not have to pay for parking. Now, I'm going to put up a, a graphic here. You can see where the Capitol Theater is in the bottom right. We have the surface lot across the street next to the Eagles. You can park there. You can park on the stack lot behind that on 10th Street. And then over across from the Stone and Thomas building on Market Street, we got that whole huge uh, surface lot there as well, plus all the meters throughout town. You can park anywhere. All three of those lots are within a half a block to a block of the Capitol. So this is not like we're walking all over town. This is very, very, very doable. Do not park where there are signs that say do not park. Is that easy enough? 
All right, so because there are some lots down there that, you know, for the night's in or for whatever establishment or permit parking or whatever, and some of you, some of you are ornery enough that you'll go, oh, I'm not doing Sunday morning. I'm just going to pull right in there, right? And, and you, you might get away with it, but you know what? It's going to make the church look bad if we start doing that. So I ask you to please park in the designated areas. We're going to have signs all over town uh, to help you find those designated areas, but those are some of the places not to park. All right. Ne- the next question is, what about handicap parking? Uh, great question, and we've thought of that, and we care. And so we're going to... I was on the phone with the folks from uh, Wheeling PD this week. We're going to bag about 10 meters around the Capitol, across the street. You can see the blue lines down the alley next to the mall center. Those will be bagged. And we also are going to take the front row of spots on that surface lot when you just get off the interstate. And that's about a half block down. We're going to take those and set those aside as handicapped as well. We will run the shuttle from that lot. I mean, if you need a shuttle, we'll run the shuttle from that lot down to the Capitol as well. So I think we got you covered on the handicap stuff. Here's the deal. If you don't need to park in a handicap spot, please don't park in a handicap spot. If you do, absolutely, we want, we want to provide for you. But we, we do have a limited number of spots there and, and lots of people uh, with handicap hang tags. So that's the deal. You got it? You got it? All right. What? All right. So next question is this. Why did we buy the Kaufman building? Why did we buy the Kaufman building? This is a really, really exciting question. We bought the Kaufman building because with the space we have available at the Capitol for kids' ministry, we can grow to about 1,000 people in the Capitol Theater. The Capitol Theater sits 2,300 adults, okay? So we max out long before we max out because we don't have space for kids. And so we realized that we needed to solve that problem early. And the and Kaufman's was available. It was relatively inexpensive. It was across the street, catty corner across the street, and it was the right sized environment. And we are going to take the Kaufman building over the next 12 to 24 months. We're not going to start with the Kaufman building. Over the next 12 to 24 months, we're going to take the Kaufman building, and we're going to renovate it and turn it into Disney World for kids. And that's the plan. And then, and then when we outgrow kids area at the Capitol, we're going to move the, the older kids across the street and into Disney World, and they're going to have an awesome kids experience learning about Jesus on their level every week. Now, one of the concerns we heard was, what about getting the kids across the street safely? Have you been in downtown on Sunday morning? I'm just, <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm just saying. It is, uh, it, it, it'll be fine. And we will, we will post security there to help, help families get across the street and all that. It will be absolutely, absolutely fine. So, next question. What are we going to do with the kids for now? Um, we are going to, the space we have available to us at the, at the Capitol is in the ballroom. It's upstairs uh, in the ballroom, which is actu- actually really, really cool. It, enables us to create a very secure location for kids. And, um, but if you have kids, you're going to want to take them, you don't want to go into the main part of the Capitol. The entrance is out front. I'm going to put a picture up so you can see the entrance. It is, see the main doors? It's to the left. That's the door. Now you're like, but what if I get confused and don't, don't worry, we're going to have a 20-foot blaze orange sign right in front of that door. All right, but if you have kids or invite anybody with kids, you want to go in that door. We'll have folks in the lobby turning you around and sending you out because you can't get there once you get inside. You want to go in, you want to go in that door. You'll go up the steps. There's an elevator there as well that you can ride up if you need an elevator. And then we're going to take your kids into what we're going to, we're going to turn this into a fantastic kids area. We've been working with Church on Wheels, which is a portable church specialist. specialist to build an environment that will really wow your kids. Uh, Our worship art pastor, Matt, uh, is also an artist, and so he's helped work with them and put together some custom graphics that are just going to... These are on 30-foot long banners that will make up walls. So we're not even going to see their walls. We're creating our own walls. Here's some of the artwork tied in the suspension bridge. Um, That's a 30-foot wall. That's a 30-foot wall. Uh, the, to create environments where the kids will walk in and go, wow, this is just for us. And the next one's for the fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. And that's going to kind of be a 
part of their space to create environments where kids feel like, man, they're really special, and they'll be able to hear about Jesus and learn about Jesus on their level. Um, and so that's what we're going to do for now. Does following me? So bring people with kids. Take them up there. I think it will be a better kids' environment than we have here. I really do. Um, and so, and we can grow to about 1,000 people before we outgrow that space. So bring them. Bring them, bring them. 12 to 24 months out. If we fill up 1,000, we'll do a second service. We'll fill that up, and 12 to 24 months, we'll be ready to go into the Kauffman building. Excellent. That's the answer to that question. Next question. What about the naked lady statues? I know you were thinking it. I mean, you might as well, might, might as well call it what it is. I went down and I spent some time analyzing the naked lady statues. They are not naked. I'm just saying. They're not. They're covered. They're wrapped in a sheet. You dirty-minded man. I'm just kidding. So... So we, we thought we would, uh, we, we thought about maybe putting, like, knitting a halter top or something to put on them. We got, actually, we did a, did a mock-up. We thought, that just doesn't look good. And besides, they're not naked anyway. Um, and so the people at the Capitol love their statues, hands in the air. We like to think they're worshiping ladies, you know, it's kind of <laughs> classical art. But we will have cameras facing the congregation, so if you're looking up there during worship, just know you're going to be busted. I'm just saying. Right. Have to address that. They are not naked. Turn to your neighbor and say, they are not naked. All right. All right. Good. We got that covered. How are we going to promote it is the next question. How are we going to promote this? Really? You should come to church with me this weekend. That's how we're going to promote it. And guys, we gave you two stickers to put on your cars or wherever else you want to stick them. We gave you a key tag to remind you of the three knots and to invite last weekend. This weekend, you are going to get this really cool ball cap that you can wear around town and just start conversations with. And next weekend, we have a bracelet for you uh, to wear, again, a conversation starter, and then look for opportunities for those three knots to pop up. And when they do, just say, really, you need to come to church with me this weekend, all right? That's, that's cool. Now, we're doing the soft launch, and then we have the grand opening. So you might be thinking, well, do I invite people during the soft launch? Absolutely. If the three knots come up, invite them to come. Explain that we're kind of working out the bugs, but they'll get a behind the scenes. They're going to be curious anyway. They're going to get a behind the scenes look and that we're, you know, give us grace because we're working things out and trust that God will make the connection. But invite, invite, invite. That's the main way we're going to promote. But we're also going to do some, we're going to give you some cover, we're going to do some internet marketing, we're going to do some radio spots, we're doing a mailing, we're going to put a few billboards up, and, uh, and, and all that does, guys, is get people familiar with the concept so that when you say, really, you need to come to church with me this weekend, it's not a foreign concept. They're like, oh, I heard about that, I want to, I want to learn more, and so you can bring them along. We have such an amazing opportunity right now because people are curious they're like, what are you doing going down there? What, what is it that you do? And, and I mean, they're just all kinds of questions. And this is, for the next probably six months, we have a window of invitation opportunity that is just well expanded just because of the curiosity. So please, please, please take advantage of that and continue to say, really, you should come to church with me this weekend. All right, what are we doing with this building? That's the next question. Well, we are keeping this building. This building is paid for, and um, this building is key to this entire strategy. This is home, right? And we need home. Any church that's going to go meet in a theater in a portable environment on a Sunday morning needs a place to base out of a home base, and that is, this, is, this is such an ideal situation, guys. We are going to be, do our offices here. We're going to meet, have small group meetings and other meetings here. Our youth use this space now on Wednesday nights. So cool. Uh, and so uh, we're going to still have this place to do weddings uh, and uh, logistics and all of that. And so we're not getting rid of the building. Home is still home. And this is it. Up the road, we have the Outreach Outfitter, which we stage all our out, outreaches out of. And we stage the, we're actually staging the move to the capital out of that. And as we launch campuses around the region, 
those will be staged out of that. We have such amazing resources to do what God has called us to do. And so if you are attached to this building, you can come anytime during the week and spend some time with it. It'll be great. <laughs> All right? So you'll still be here. Um, what's next? How is being portable going to change things? Well, I think it's going to improve things because of where we're going to be portable. We uh, actually had the portable church people come in and and uh, as they went around the, the facility down there, they said, this may be the nicest portable facility we've ever been in, ever. They're really excited for us. Uh, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be an improvement. Uh, but there is a little bit of a change, and that is we're going to have to set up and tear down some things each and every weekend. And so if you have the capacity to come a little bit early or stay a little bit late and help pack up things, it's not hard to do. It doesn't take a huge amount of time, but it does take people. If you're from the, if you're from the highlands, you know, yeah, woo-hoo, you, you know this, you live this, this is in your DNA, but if you're not, this is kind of a new thing and a great opportunity, a great place for you to serve. And we're going to need some people so that it you know, many hands make light work, and it's not a burden on anybody. And so that's the only thing that I, I really see see changing, other than we're gonna. It's other than awesome. Um, so <laughs> next question is this: What about prayer at the end of service? Where are we gonna do that? Are we gonna do that? And let me just say, as long as I'm pastor and we have people who want to pray, we're gonna do prayer at the end of the service. Uh, I believe that's one thing that is part of our DNA that God that we can offer to people. There's people in need and there's people who like to pray and Jesus shows up and it's just powerful, powerful stuff. And so we will continue to do that. We're gonna change how we're doing it a little bit in that we're not gonna ask people to come forward. We actually have space in the back where as you're on your way out, you'll see big banners in the back that say prayer and you just be able to go right around and walk right in there. We're gonna have an environment set up with high top tables so you can come up to a hot top table and talk with somebody and share a very casual environment, share what's going on, get some prayer. And, uh, and you don't have to come forward as everybody else is going out. You can just walk out with everybody else and stop by the prayer area, okay? So that's how we're going to do that. And I think that's going to be an easier step for people who are, you know, don't like to come, come up in front of everybody. So it gives them an opportunity to get prayer anyhow. So that's going to that's gonna change. Uh, what about the cafe? Now, this is a touchy one. All right, so, so we don't have a space that we can have a cafe, and we anticipate growing in that environment, and so we can't, we can't have big, long lines and, you know, you want this, do you want that, do you want, you know, and, and all of that. And so we're going to streamline that a bit. We will still have coffee because we have a strong coffee culture, and I believe coffee is the Holy Spirit helper. So... Um, <laughs> You'll be able to get a coffee on your way in, but the rest of the stuff is going to go away. You'll be able to pick up a coffee real quick and, and get in there, and we can get more people served more quickly. And then the hangout space, the, the uh, fellowship space, will be in the theater itself. That means that the hot chocolate and all the other... And here's the deal with the hot chocolate and the donut holes and everything else. I've watched my kids go around all hopped up on sugar after eating like 20... I've watched your kids go around. They got two cups of donut holes and a, and a hot chocolate, and they're just like, sugar! And, and it's not healthy. It's not good for them. And there are several of you adults who I've seen do the exact same thing. And then, and then when, when the donut holes don't show up for some reason, you get nasty. And, you know, I'm just saying, we're going to eliminate all of that. If you need sugar uh, before you get here, just, just stop over at Tim Hortons or Kroger or whatever. Buy your own, 12 do own dozen donuts and eat them in the car, and then you can come in. I'm not encouraging that. I'm just saying. I just, but that's what's going on with the cafe. Um, next question is this. What's going on between now and then? Oh, my gosh, I don't have time to tell you. Uh, but we will be, we will be uh, installing things at the Capitol. They're allowing us to make a permanent install of a lot of our gear so it's easier to get in and get out quickly, which is so fantastic. Um, and so all that's going on. We're going to be organizing all the portable stuff. We've got a bunch of gear coming in. We've got all the gear from the Highlands. We're going to get all that sorted and organized, and the trailer worked out. We're going to be training volunteers. Please pray. Please pray for the next two weeks. If, if you pray for your church, pray. And if you don't pray for your church, start praying for your church, especially over the next two weeks, because there's just, 
It's going to be busy, and there's going to be a million details, and just pray for unity and blessing and favor, and that the pieces will come together the way they're supposed to. Last, last, oh, no, not the last question. Second to last question, what's going on with groups this fall? You haven't heard a whole lot about groups, and uh, there's a reason for that. We have a handful of groups that will be meeting that are just closed groups that get together every semester, and they're just going to continue going. Uh, we will be doing Financial Peace University, and we will be doing Grief Share. But other than that, we're not doing any groups. Uh, we're going to do Alpha on Tuesday. And uh, woo, Alpha fans, woohoo! If you've not done Alpha, do Alpha. It's going to be Tuesday nights. It's going to start in October, and, um, and Alpha is phenomenal. In fact, my, my desire would be, even if you've done Alpha five times, come back and do Alpha. Alpha is like a Kickstarter on your faith. Uh, and so come back and do Alpha on Tuesday evenings. And here's why we're doing this. One, because Alpha is awesome. But secondly, because as we've looked at what was going on with our groups, and, and we've been looking at this for a while, they're not accomplishing quite what we want them to accomplish for the most part. Some of them are, some of them aren't. But we, we want to retool our groups and come out with groups that are really effective at connecting you guys in community and growing your faith over the long haul and building community. And so we're working on that in the background. We have a great plan, but uh, we're going to be working with leaders and everything behind the scenes as we go through the fall, and we will launch that whole new group strategy when we get to the winter. Make sense? All right, so Alpha in the meantime, and you can sign up on your Connect card for Alpha right now if you want. Last question, how can I help? I know you're asking. How can you help? Well, a couple ways. You can serve. If you have not signed up to serve, you have not gone to a volunteer orientation, write volunteer on your Connect card, just write volunteer, and we will track you down and we'll figure out a way to get you plugged in and caught up to speed and be part of that team. I'm telling you, when you begin to serve in your church, it really becomes your church. You begin to make friends, you begin to have ownership of what's going on, and it's just, it, it's a completely different, better experience. And so if you haven't signed up to volunteer, if you've not gone through the volunteer orientation, you can write volunteer on your Connect card and get plugged in. Second thing you can do is just practice every morning in the mirror. Really? You should come to church with me this weekend and invite, 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 invite. If only 2% of us are inviting right now, if we can get it up to 98% of us inviting and if 82% of them are likely to say yes, guys, it blows up this entire community in a good way. We can change the Ohio Valley and we need to start to invite. So invite, invite, invite. Third thing, sign up for Alpha. Again, you can do this on your Connect card. Just check, and we'll get, get you the, the date. I think it's October 3rd, but it's going to be at the very beginning of October. Alpha will begin, and it is a fantastic experience. Guys, if, if the church is a movement, if the church is the people of God living together in the presence of God on the mission from God, pushing back darkness and changing the world one life at a time, that means you, you, are the church. You are the solution. We look at the problems in our community and we look at the challenges that kids are facing, the challenges that our adults are facing, the challenges that our community, the answer is Jesus. The answer is Jesus changing people's lives from the inside out. Nothing else will get it done. And it's not hard. It's just us being who and what Jesus has called us to be and do. And if we will, and if you will, we are going to see this community changed in the years to come, maybe in the months to come. Because I believe that if enough people meet Jesus and begin to follow him, the very culture of our community will be changed. And we won't be 49th in the country at everything. We will lead the way. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much that you have planted this church right here in Wheeling, West Virginia, to be a light, Lord, to make a difference, to bring hope, to change the culture of this community, and to push back the darkness. God, I pray that every one of us would take our responsibility seriously. I pray, God, that you would help us to invite, that you would help us to serve, that you would help us to grow in our faith as we're doing that, God. And Lord, 
that you would move in such a monumental way that we would be blown away, that we just sit back and go, oh my goodness, this has to be you. This has to be God. Lord, would you do greater things, greater things than we could hope for, ask for, or even imagine? And would you just use us, ordinary average people in Wheeling, West Virginia, to do it? In Jesus' name I pray, amen.